Would you pray with me today? Would you say, Jesus, help me to be what you want me to be. Do what you want me to do. Because people without you go to hell. So I'm sitting in Norway in the middle of the night because I don't sleep in Norway except during the day. By the way, uh, I woke up at 9 o'clock uh, today, Norway time, which is like 2 a.m. here. And so I've been up for a little while, and jet lag is, is, is an awful, terrible beast. But uh, I'm, I'm getting ready for today, and so I start Googling some stuff. And I, I Google um, uh, modern exorcism. And the first page that came up was, I think we got it here. Uh, we have here the, the wiki. The wiki how page? Oh, that's not that. Oh, anyway. Um, it, it, the very top result is how I, to perform an exorcism. And so I thought this morning we would just go through the wiki how page of how to perform an exorcism. And then you would all know how. No, that's not what we're going to do. But So then I was, I was Googling around a little more and looking at some stuff. And I found another guy. Now maybe we'll get this, the, the Bob Larson site. Did that one get up there? Let's try the Bob Larson site. Yeah, there's Bob Larson, modern day exorcist, okay? Um, and so we can look at his stuff to see what he does with in the area of deliverance. I, I watched his stuff, and uh, actually, uh, he's on YouTube a lot. Spooky stuff, you know, majorly spooky stuff. And um, and so we can you can look at that. I think he's a nut, okay? Just so you know, I I, I think that he's uh, uh, you know out of out of balance at the very least so there's been there's lots of bad teaching out there in the area of demons and deliverance and how christians are supposed to interact with the spiritual world and so when you walk out of here today <clears throat> i want you to have a firm grasp of how god wants you to interact with the spiritual realm because I, I believe there is a spiritual realm and i believe it does impact our lives and i think god has a very specific way that he wants you to interact with it now when i was younger um, I, I, I got a hold of some, some deliverance teaching. And I can tell you, I'm, I wasn't expecting to see my mom and dad here this morning. And so this would have been easier to share had you guys not been here. Um, but, because <coughs> they were going to go directly to Bonanzaville. But I, um, yeah, right, can you step up for a moment? When I was like eight years old, I remember my, my friend down the block, about five houses. Um, I remember doing deliverance on my Catholic friend down the block, Okay. And, and every little burp and every sneeze, I remember sitting in the back seat of his mom's car and, and this kid burping and then saying, uh, you think that was a demon? I said, yeah. <laughs> and, and now, now, I wasn't, you know, I, I'm in good company because actually, I, I, I don't know if this is true. I just read this once. It doesn't necessarily make it true. But when you say God bless you, that that got started because in medieval times when you sneeze, they thought that was demons leaving. And you had to say bless you quick so the demons couldn't <laughs> get back in again. Okay, and so that that's where that came from. But I don't that may not be true. Actually, you have a timer on this woman. Okay, <laughs> not conducive to preaching. All right. Um, so so I, I got I got really um, you know demons from the I, I, I messed with them when even when I was a little kid. Okay, and I'm gonna I'm a I'll talk a little bit more about that here in just a minute. It, it, please don't take the last five minutes out of context and not listen to the rest of the message. Okay, I promise that it's gonna get less fruity from here. But I, I've heard some really fruity teachings. Now these are not mine. Okay, so don't like don't take this out of context and say Pastor Scott said this because I'm not saying this. I just well, but this is some really yucky stuff out there. Uh, I heard read one guy that said that when you are doing a deliverance session and you command a demon to come out and the demon doesn't listen to you, what that means is, now see if you can follow this all the way through, it's actually a human type spirit that is in reality a giant squid living at the bottom of the ocean that has taken over the mind control in that person. And the only way to set that person free is to pray and to ask God to send a sperm whale, because they eat giant squids, to swim deep down in the ocean and eat the giant squid so that that person can be set free from a spirit of mind control. Simple enough, right? Okay. <laughs> There's some strange things out there. Uh, the, uh, the, the Larson guy that I showed you, uh, he travels around and he does deliverance services. And he'll bring a person up out of the audience, and he'll put a microphone in their, in their face, and he will cast out devils. And he'll talk to them. He'll ask them, well, how many generations have you been in this family? Have you done all of these things? And, and I, 
some of the things I'll share with you, I can say for sure. Some of the things I'll share with you, and I'll say this is kind of my opinion, okay? Because I don't want to, you know, where my, the scripture is very clear in some areas and others. I'm not sure he's not dealing with real demons. But you know what I've learned about the devil? He loves attention. The devil loves attention. He likes to, to get it away from God and to, and, and to take it for himself. And we're going to uh, take a look at something here. In Matthew, Mark, rather, chapter 15, verse 16, Jesus speaking, he says, Go into all the world. This is the Great Commission verse, right? Preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. So these are things that Jesus said you should be doing if you believe. These signs shall accompany you if you believe. In my name, they will drive out demons and they will speak in other tongues. And so the thing that Jesus said would happen if you believed in him, in your wake, demons would be driven out. Now, people would take that and say, well, that's why we know that there is not enough deliverance in the church. There should be more deliverance ministries going on because we have all of these demons causing all of these problems. Um, But if you believe in the Bible, if you say, I believe the word of God is true, then uh, you have to believe that there are demons. If you believe there are angels, there's demons, and it's all in Scripture. But let me see if I can give you a little bit of perspective and a little bit of balance. A few years ago, I got a call from the head psychologist in the West Fargo uh, school district. This person called me, and they said, and they, uh, I knew her, and she said, Pastor Scott, I got a kid who thinks he's seeing demons, and I want you to talk to him. And so I didn't know what, uh, I didn't know what to, you know, what to make of that. So I, I go to see this kid. Oh, okay, good. Um, that's good. Um, I go to see this kid, and I and, and we're sitting in the um, in the auditorium of the of the school. And I go in to see him, and and he looks at me and he starts telling me about all the demons that he was seeing. He had looked across the room and he he said he could see demons all over the place. And so he's looking, and he's telling me all about this. And as I'm listening, I just let him talk for a while. And I got a sense that it was real important to him to feel special that he could see into the spiritual realm. Now, as I sat there, this is what went through my head. Number one, do you, Scott, do you think that he's seeing demons? No, I, I don't actually think he's seeing demons. Uh, but does he think he's seeing demons? Yeah, he's seeing demons. Scott, do you know for sure that he's not seeing demons? Well, no, I guess I don't know for sure that he's not seeing demons. Scott, what's the answer to his problem? And I said, ha, I know the answer to his problem. See, because whether his problem was actually seeing demons, or whether his problem was he was thinking he was seeing demons, or anything in between, the answer to his problem was Jesus. He needed Jesus in his life. So I began to talk to him, and I listened, and I said, you know, and I, and I, just, I just talked about God. I talked about the supernatural things in, in the scripture, and how everything that the devil has is a cheap copy of what Of what God has. And that God had good things for him. And so I'm telling him all about this. And anyway, time goes on. Now this particular kid could not make it through a day of school without kind of having a meltdown. I mean, he was really a high maintenance person. He had a lot of problems. And um, and so I I went to meet with him about about once a week all the way through that, that semester. And so finally I told him, I said, hey, uh... I, I really enjoy meeting with you, but I think that I've done all that I can for you. Make a long story short, I got him coming to our school club with Campus Life. He's there, and now he's working on his uh, master's degree. He's doing fantastic. He, he's written a book. Um, he's really doing, and when I first met him, he couldn't make it through a whole day of school without melting down. I'm here to tell you that whether something is really a, a demon or isn't a demon, now, some people will disagree with me on this, but I think the answer is always the same. All you got to do is get closer to God to deal with the devil. Check this out. Job chapter 1 verse 8. Then the Lord said to Satan, I hope the Lord never talks to me, talks to the devil about me. Because God starts the conversation. He says, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him. He is blameless and upright. 
a man who fears God and shuns evil. Then the, end of, the devil replies to him, Does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied. Have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? You have blessed the work of his hands so that his flocks and his herds spread throughout the land. But if you stretch out your hand and strike everything he has, then surely he will curse you to your face. Then the Lord said to Satan, very well. Everything he has is in your hands, but the man himself do not lay a finger. Then Satan went away from the presence of the Lord. There's a few things that we can learn from this verse. Number one is that the enemy, Satan, is not omnipresent. You serve a God, or I would hope you would serve a God that is all-powerful, omnipresent, awesome God. He is is complete. And And the devil is a limited, fallible being. Okay? He is a limited, fallible being. And so that's the first thing that we can learn. The second thing is, the devil says, you know, God, I can't touch him because you placed a hedge, a protection around him. And so therefore, I can't hurt Job. Let me tell you something about the God that I serve. If every Satanist in the world fasted for 40 days, cut themselves, and and did ceremonies with all, all kinds of ugliness... And they prayed to the devil every day for that 40-day fast. And and then they prayed one simple prayer, Dear Satan. Do they pray? Do they say, Dear Satan, when they pray? I don't know. Let Scott get a paper cut this afternoon. Okay? I'm telling you that unless God lifts the hedge of protection, they can't so much as give me a paper cut. The enemy is so completely small compared to God. He, he there is no there is no comparison. And so here's the cliche that I want you to learn this month. And it's this. Satan as big as you make him. Satan as big as you make him. Because no matter how big Satan is, now he's bigger than me, but he's he's a lot smaller than God, and I got God on my side and God on my team. He's he's just as big As you make them. So how should we deal with demons? The number one thing that you should do to deal with the devil is to get inside of God's hedge. How do you do that? You need to serve God. You need to love Jesus. You know, it's kind of like if I had a big umbrella out here. I put up this umbrella. And and then you come and you stand under my umbrella. And I say, you're a nice guy. If you continue to be a nice guy, you can continue to stand under my umbrella. And so you get to stand and you stay dry under that umbrella. Well, if you walk out from under that umbrella, you're going to get wet. Is that the umbrella's fault? A lot of times people think they come to God and they say, Hey, God, you're a nice guy. I want, I want you to help me. I want you to protect me. I want you to bless me. And then they walk out and they disobey God. And then they get rained on. They get hurt. They get, you know, bad things happen. And then they say, See, God, I knew you weren't real. <laughs> and, but they're the ones who left what God wanted them to do. They're the ones that walked out from underneath the umbrella. And so that's, that's kind of what it is. Number one, we need to belong to God. Number two, walk in the power and the authority that God gave you. Check this out. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. I might have missed this one on the screen, so listen up. It says, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and have overcome all of the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. My Jesus has given you all of the power of his God Father in heaven. All of it. It is all for you. God has given that to you. Now, just to give some perspective, this is the ocean compared to a mist. This is the universe compared to a, a small ant. This is almighty God who weighed the oceans in his hands. There is no limit to him. Could you help me out for a minute, Matthew? Could you come down here? There is no limit to what God uh, God can do. This is Matthew. I'm having him come down here because Matthew's a big guy. Okay. Now, I'm not that big of a guy. If I move my cowboy boots, I'm about 5'5", okay? And so, um, I'm not that big of a guy. But I've learned that a, a, a little scrapper like me can have a big mouth if he's got a big friend. Okay? I'm the guy 
who, you know, goes out. I don't go out to bars, but I go out to the bar and I shoot my mouth off and then my friend has to get in a fight, right? And, um, and, so, and, that, and that's me. And, and that is kind of how it goes. I, I've had, like, if you're with God and you're walking around and you won't be linking arms, but, you know, and you're walking around and we get beat up if we did this. Um, and, you're, and you're with God and you can get, you know, and then you've got a little, I should, uh, we don't have time, I should have another one, you come over. And then a little pesky demon comes out, but it, he's actually not that small. Because the thing is, is he's a lot bigger than I am, okay? If I was to met with, mess with this devil on my own, he would kick my little butt, all right? But we're walking along, and, but when I've got him with me, and we're walking along, I can be like, oh, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, you can't touch me, you get your hands off my family, you get your, and I can, I can be like that. But then what happens one day if a really big devil comes? And I get freaked out. This is what I do right here. <laughs> nah, nanny poo poo. And there's nothing he can do because my God is big. He's the ocean to his mist, he's the mountain to the grain of sand. My God is so huge. And so is Matthew. <laughs> Would you give Matthew a big round of applause, everybody? Thank you so much. <clears throat> So the thing I want you to remember today, that Satan is only as big as you make him. Because God is absolutely awesome. He is absolutely huge. But if there was a catch, this is it. You have to come under the umbrella. You have to say, God, I want to serve you. And how then does the Bible says that you will drive out demons? As you walk after Christ. I want to tell you how you drive out demons. You share Jesus with people. And, and I've seen this happen. And, and, and I, I think that sometimes people are messing with real demons in those deliverance sessions. I don't know that for sure. I don't know the difference between mental illness and demons. I don't know the difference between sickness and demons. And neither did the disciples. One time the disciples brought a, a sick guy to Jesus. And Jesus cast the devil out of him. Sometimes Jesus just healed the guy. Okay, And so I, I don't have all those answers. But what I do know is that when I can get Jesus into somebody's life and they give him their heart and they begin to grow and they begin to read the word and they begin to mature, all of that yuck gets pushed out of their lives. And you know what? There's no rebuking of demons to be done. There's no, there, it's such an easy thing because light conquers darkness. It only takes a spark to get the fire going. It One Light conquers the darkness completely. There is no standing against it. If this room is completely black and all I did was, was, was hit a spark, you would see that spark from anywhere in the room. And so the key is to driving out devils is not to have big, long, messy, embarrassing, scary deliverance sessions. No, how do you get rid of the devil's influence in your life? You increase the influence of Jesus in your life. Now, I'm not saying there's never a time when you don't say, Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Get your hands off of this or that. I think that's appropriate. But you know what's more important is you being like Jesus and seeing that light grow and get bigger and bigger. We're going to receive the offering in about two minutes' time. So if you want to prepare for that, that would be fantastic. But I want to invite you today to come under the umbrella, to be the person to say, you know, God, I tried picking some of those fights on my own. Now, maybe it was, they weren't demons coming at you in the night, but maybe it was, there's something that's been in your life that has been hurting you over and over and over again. I want to encourage you that God has the answer for you. I believe that God takes you exactly where you are and then creates in you who he wants you to be. That's the God that I serve. That's why th- I, this should be the most non-judgmental church ever. Because we are all screwed up. <laughs> and we're screwed up in such a way. And we say, God, we can't do this on him. That's why we pray that every week. That little prayer that I did at the beginning. I say, Jesus, help me. Because I want it to be reminded every week that none of this happens because of Scott. None of this happens because I had willpower or I was strong or I was good. When God gets bigger in my life, what that means is, is that my, my God is creating in me. I get credit for none of it. He does all the work. All I have to do is be obedient. The only step you have to take today is to be obedient to him. You don't have to be big. You don't have to be strong. None of those things. All you have to do is be his.
Now, as you're sitting there today and you've got the thank you, all of you that are, are, are filling out that first time visitor card. And we're going to send that out this week. What a privilege to have you here today. Thank you for being here. If you're here today and you have a question about anything having to do with the powers of darkness, um, I, I am fairly re- well read on the subject. And, we'll, and again, I'll, I'll try to be real clear. What does the Bible say exactly? What do I think? And then we can talk about it. You know, there are probably different perspectives. In the coming weeks, uh, next week we're going to talk about angels. I'm going to see if I can record a testimony from Pastor Cal, who uh, my friend over at First Assembly, who... Uh, believes that an angel came and was part of his service one day. It's a, it's a really neat, neat story. Because the Bible says that you will entertain angels unaware. And so they made that assumption in the scripture. We're going to talk about ghosts. Now, this is a tough one. Yeah, you can go ahead and receive the offering as soon as you're, it's convenient. Um, we're going to talk about ghosts. And that's a tricky one, too. Scripture doesn't say much about ghosts. It gives us just a couple of little windows. And, uh, and so we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the, we're going to talk about the devil. And, and, and that, and so, and then the following Thursday after every week, we're going to have a uh, small group Bible study. Your kids can go swimming. It's a lot of fun. It, I think it's going to be a good time on Thursday nights. But I will answer questions every week about those things. And if I don't know, I'll say I don't know, but we'll talk about it and we'll get some perspectives. What I will do is I'll show you what the scripture says about it and then we can debate after that, okay? Matter of fact, the ghost one is really interesting because scripture really messes us up with ghosts because the little bit that it gives us is a little bit confusing. I'm just telling you right now. But we're going to look at it together and we're going to we're going to dig into it together. And I, th- I think it's going to be a, a lot of fun. I'm going to pray even as the buckets continue to go, so don't feel bad if you've got to deal with that. But Lord, I love you. I thank you, God, that today that there's people here that you want to be a part of your kingdom, that you want to be a part of your, of your family. And Lord, I, I just pray, God, that you would help us just to do a good job of loving you and loving each other. And Lord, I pray that if there is anybody here tonight that, or this morning that is outside of your umbrella, Lord, they, they walked away from you and then got mad at you for not keeping, you, keeping them dry. Or maybe they didn't get mad, but maybe they're just on the outside looking in and they know they're on the outside looking in. Lord, I thank you how available you are to us today. I thank you, God, how available you are and that you're not mad at anybody here. Lord, you're not there with your big cosmic hammer looking to, to bop anybody on the head. But rather, God, you are longing for them to come back to you. And so, Lord, I come to you today and I say, God, I am broken. Would you please take me and make me who you want me to be? Lord, I pray that every person in this place could take a step closer to you, Jesus. Because I know how much you love them. And Lord, I know that they need you. Even if they don't even know it yet, I know that they do. So, God, I ask that your Holy Spirit would gently and with wisdom and tact draw them to yourself, God. And Lord, I pray that all of us together can take a step to you. Lord, let us take a step under your umbrella. And even when we fail, Lord, help us just to cling to you under that umbrella. In Jesus' name, we love you, Lord. Amen.